Good afternoon. Welcome to the to panel four of the Congress. We go now to a completely different project. Yeah. It's school, school and school, and another school. Uh, it's uh, this is um, Jose Maria Arenas, and he's at the moment working in. A, in a secondary school in the very heart of Barcelona, in Barceloneta. Uh, many of you know where that is. And, well, I think it's a very interesting school. Um, as far as European projects are referred, mm -hmm. because it's a sort of um, pool where everything may happen or, or maybe not. Or may not. Uh, so it depends on who uh, is leading it. Yes. So it's yeah. a very good example of a successful uh, activity in, in a difficult place. Okay, and I guess I need my presentation on. You need Somehow. your presentation. Yes. And, uh, and uh, probably in the folder. Here? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe. And uh, if I do uh, that. Cuadro. And is the yeah the second one. Well, first of all, of all I would like to thank, to thank like the everyone in the CET Congress. Um, as you see today, uh, you, we see a lot of people from universities. So having people from high schools trying to present a project is actually a great dissemination. So for us, it's a great opportunity to come here and try to explain what we are doing. Um, and I will present today uh, an Erasmus Plus uh, project with four countries. And the name of the project is For Sustainable, or For Us Sustainable. And uh, it has a second name called like Create Collaboratively, Teach Locally, Share Globally, and Act Sustainable. And I will try to explain about that. Um, First of all, I would like to first start with this image. You can see the famous pyramid. When you can see that seems to be that when the students are really active and when they even try to be a teachers, seems to be that's the way that they learn the best. So we are in a society right now that we have a lot of students that it will help us to be active. And this is really important. I'm gonna present like facts to get to my project. Then we have a school right now when ITC rocks the school. It means for the last 10 years in here in Catalonia, majorly in, in everywhere, we have an, um, an, um, a huge amount of uh, apps that we can use in the schools. Uh, most of them free apps, and this is really important, and uh, these apps actually make us possible to share and to work in all different aspects and all different media. We, we have like a huge variety and it changes every year. I mean, I'm sure that we have like a double or triple of the amount of uh, logos that I have right here. But um, this is really important. That means that teachers uh, for the last 10 years we are receiving a lot of information that we can use free apps to do something else in class. Another fact, then seems to be that our students not only are active, they are really, really believe in the future as a way that we need to protect the planet, okay? And uh, this message is really important for them. Even in, in a neighborhood where I live, uh, which is close to the sea, for them it's really important that they need to keep clean the beach and also uh, the importance of having a uh, sustainable tourism because we have a strong problem right now in Barceloneta and with tourism right now. So, having these three facts, so it seems to be that right now the teachers we need to think about uh, having a safe space. Uh, the teachers uh, or the students, they want to be mentors. We are working with technology. The students, they want to choose their own material and they want to be happy people because they are choosing what they want to learn. 
and at the same time they want something practical so with everything that is actually right now in this uh, comic strip uh, we see the situation that we have right now teachers okay so I have these facts or I have these issues I want to do something and I want to get funds from somewhere to do a project about that then I have an amazing program called Erasmus Plus that let me put together like three, four, five different countries that uh, we can do a project together. Uh, for most of you, maybe they know about Erasmus Plus, but it's a uh, European project that try to um, promote uh, strategic partnerships between uh, different countries. They support innovation and also the exchange of good practices, which at the end you're going to create good practices and be able to share these practices with other people. They promote the development and testing these this new activities that you are creating. And also, they're going to recognize the teachers as a, one of the um, uh, um, pioneers on, on doing these new techniques or, the, or, or this innovation. So, um, well, uh, this is almost like our Facebook for us. Uh, all the teachers in Europe, we can communicate from each other and uh, try to find partners. So in November uh, 2014, I sort of like contact with other schools and at the end I found like three schools that were more or less uh, having the same ideas that I have. I found a school in, uh, in Belgium uh, that was really good in presenting results and dissemination results. I found a German school who was really important in creating clean material. Remember this material that we can create when the language is not the important thing. is the, the language is the use to learn another subject. Then I found a Greek school, which I call them my master of uh, ITC, who has a lot of uh, good experience uh, using ITC tools. And then me, the European coordinator, and uh, I will say, expert, I would say, I don't know, uh, in evaluation and gamification and creating apps, okay, for mobiles. So we put together a project where um, we will make our students to collaborative <coughs> thinking because we think that from the future we're going to need professionals that they know how to work together. And this is super important. In, work together and try it all together to create something. We need a um, society with a digital skills, and this is really important in learning, teaching, and training. Uh, of course, uh, try to do a project with uh, a choir of basic and transversal skills. Let's try to find a subject that they will be related with the students. Let's make the students be inactive. So, um, having a real impact in all audiences of the project. Let's create something, because sometimes we try, we, we, we try the, the teachers as well, um, we try to do things and at the end we are lack of presenting the resources and presenting the results. So in this case, let's try to create something and have everything always available with, oh, for other teachers. Um, let's use, of course, uh, Creative Commons as a way of sharing the information. Let's try to teach our students how to transfer the information to younger students, which is trying to use this gap between my students, 16 years old, to primary students and see how all this transfer of information uh, increase the level of learning. And then, of course, let's use all the social media uh, apps that we have right now, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, blah, 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 blah. And of course. So, uh, my project or our project is going to base in create material, teach this material to young students, share this material globally, and then at the end, let's see if we have some results on the way that they act. Okay? We focus everything in being sustainable. That was the major core of our project. And we decide that for countries, in each country, we will work on a specific subject inside being sustainable. We started in Belgium working with food, 
So all the activities, all the workshops, everything that we did during that week was about food. Then we moved to Greece last week. I mean, three days ago I was in Greece. Uh, we were working about uh, in, in a subject in related with water. Then we moved to waste, which is going to be a subject that we're going to be uh, working in in Germany. And then uh, the last workshop is going to be next year in uh, Barcelona, and we're going to talk about energy. So I'm going to try to present some examples of the activities that we create. First of all, uh, we have um, a website. And uh, in, uh, in, in this website, we have everything really um, on it. When I mean that is uh, everyone can access to all the activities. Yeah, uh, they can download all the activities. Everything is in PDF, PDF files. Everything is Creative Commons. And uh, you can see, uh, you know, for all the different subjects, all the different uh, activities that we can create. One of the activities that we really like, and uh, it was something that we're going to do in all the different uh, workshops, uh, we let our students to introduce themselves using a, an app called Boki. It's a way to, to communicate, a way to create their own avatar, which is actually a really good thing. They, they, they spend hours changing the avatar and, and also, yeah, yeah, they are <laughs> definitely. And um, my students were more classic. I can, I can point you my students. Daphne, oops. Uh, what is the laser? For instance, this one is my student. This one is my student, my student. So the Spanish students were really classic, maybe because the professor was so afraid. It was like, let's don't do anything else. Just, just be, you know, formal. But then you have German students, you know, having a squirrel or having the, I don't know how you call, you call this in English, but um, a normal. But uh, it was really great to introduce themselves. So every workshop, the six students that we take from each country, they introduce themselves using this application. Okay, so they, they sort of like, you can play and then, and then they speak and then they do a description and then we make the pairs because usually we share um, uh, partner, so one of my students stay in a house with the other students. So that was a great activity as a introduction of the of the people involved in the project. Our first uh, activity, um, the activity that actually took us more time, we create a game. It was a professional card game, actually a super professional card game. I'm really impressed of the result. Uh, we create a game. I will come back to later to this. It was a card game, uh, in each card we have information about food. The specific was about vegetables. And there was information, sorry. Well, I don't know how you do it. Well, the information that we have, yeah, we'll actually, if I can have this, that would be much better. So the information in the card, no, sorry, the mouse is not working, um, yes, no, you know what, I can, I can, if I stand up, maybe, sorry, oh, now, now it's working, perfect, thank you. So we have, we design a, a, a card. Uh, and it's a 40 uh, game card, so we have 40 vegetables, and uh, we decide which information we're gonna write inside the card. Okay, that was the first step. Say, so we have a card, let's do a role game, okay, and we're gonna put some information. Then we're gonna design what kind of games we can do. We use uh, information about kilometer zero, so for instance, we calculate how many kilometers to take or to obtain these vegetables from the school. Okay, that was a, an information that we have. Value zero means that you need to go more than 100 kilometers. Val value four means that you can reach uh, this uh, vegetable really close to your school. Then we have uh, an information about popularity, which was like a uh, questionnaire that we, uh, the our students did. And then at the end we have like a average of if they like or they don't like uh, this vegetable and then we have like uh, the seasons that uh, these um, vegetables grow uh, all over the year in the end what we have was an opportunity to create games 
So we met in, in Belgium, our students work in, four, so, uh, in groups of uh, four, and then they create games that you can play with these cards. And then from there, we create like four different games. There was like a big selection of the different, we create more or less like, more like 10 games, but at the end we just choose the four that were more creative. From these games, we tested with young students. So the idea was, okay, so we have the games, we have the cards, so now we're gonna test with young students. So we, we went to a primary school with our students and then they were teaching them how to play with these cards, okay? Other things that we did, because we did a lot of activities, uh, we were lucky to be close to a university, the Bibes University near Verne in, uh, in, uh, in Belgium. And uh, this university has a, a department that they work with uh, another way to obtain protein from insects. So we did just like a master class uh, about talking about insects as a way to obtain proteins. And then we try some proteins. I can see uh, Fedra from Greece trying to uh, eat a, 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 I don't know if it was a, like a, a worm or something. And then Chema trying to, you know, offer to the rest of the students. At the end, as a result of this activity, we asked the students, okay, what is your impression? What you thought about uh, when you were trying this? And then we create a work cloud with all these uh, different words that we, that we had. One of the important things that in this project is how we're gonna evaluate uh, every time that we do a workshop in a way that uh, all this effort that we are putting, uh, are they gonna act differently before and after? So we create these questionnaires before and after to everyone involved in the project. And then we can see that there was some difference. This is just new. I mean, we just received the, I just received the last graphic. So I'm still working. This, this is our first year of the project. So we're still working, but, but it's important. I mean, it's important that we got this money from the European Union and we're gonna have somehow some results if we are being um, using that money to change the act in a way of if they are more sustainable or not. Um, last week we were in Greece and we focused everything about water. And uh, the activities that we create were surrounded uh, and uh, using a debate as excuse to use communication. We divide our students in, we, we actually create a scenario and uh, we told our students, uh, uh, you live in a small town and seems to be that this small town wants to open a factory related with uh, bottled water, okay? So we give them like one hour to prepare themselves and uh, there was a team with the mayor involved uh, going after or being after um, or agree with the factory and there was another team uh, against to build the factory. We give them one hour, they prepare themselves like the arguments for, you know, yes or no. And then every time one of them talk because everyone has a different role. There was uh, the mayor, there was the factory owner, there was the, uh, the um, head of the commercial association. And uh, so every time they talk, the public was involved too because they moved from one side to the other side if they were agree, agree or not, if they agree with the experience or not. Uh, this activity it was, is one of the, uh, um, the activities that really um, uh, improve the way to communicate uh, using English as a, as a communication. Uh, every time that we create an activity, we develop a clear activity to explain that and an easy activity that everyone can download and use in another school. Okay? Another activity that we did, it was an experiment um, to uh, calculate how much water do, you use, do, do people use to wash their hands. Uh, my students, actually that was an activity that the Barcelona students were in charge, uh, what they did is uh, create a fake experiment at the same time that they were calculating the water that the kids were using to wash their hands. So uh, the kids were sort of like um, treated 
in a way of uh, they thought that they were doing another experiment, so they washed their hands, but at the same time we were collecting the water uh, at the same time that we were doing the other experiment. So uh, again, uh, the experiment, we created a clear activity uh, to explain how it works, and if someone wants to uh, copy or reproduce this activity in another school. Everything, of course, is, um, is uh, uploaded in uh, our project card, and um, we are really, actually, really uh, mm, happy with the first results of this first year. Uh, I just, I mean, as, as uh, Mercedes say, I came from a school which is a maximum complexity school. It's a really tiny school, and uh, for us, uh, being involved in a European project and um, uh, traveling abroad is super important. So actually, it's, it's been changing a lot, the school, for the last uh, few months. And everyone wants to be uh, in the project, participate somehow, and you know, the, I have uh, a student from uh, the young students for, uh, that they want to, that they know that in a couple of years they're going to be involved in the project somehow. Uh, what is the future right now? The future right now of this project is uh, we're going to base everything more in uh, social media. Uh, the next two workshops are going to be more specific in creating apps and using mobile phones as a way of, uh, of being more sustainable. And, um, and the questions or consideration that, uh, that at the end of my presentation I would like to, to stress out is uh, experience outside the classroom enhance learning by providing students an opportunity to practice new skills and also uh, to make them to solve problems. Okay, this is super important. We need students that they are able to reach as much information as they can and try to solve a problem. We really strongly believe that gamification is a new way to involve students in the project. Our future is what about if this gamification, uh, we use rewards as a way to keep the interest. And not only use rewards, what about if these rewards are uncertain in a way that you are not sure what kind of rewards you're going to get. This is a new theory right now on a way of using rewards for uh, gamification. And then at the end, I would just like to just say that um, for a teacher, for a school teacher, participation in this kind of, uh, of uh, projects does not mean a change in your weekly amount of hours of teaching. At the end, it's just the effort that we put on willingness to work in this kind of projects. So it's like all my free time and all my free time from a lot of uh, high school teachers that I can see from here that we put to um, put together these projects and make them uh, happen. And um, as Yoda say, your attention, I thank you for. So thank you <laughs> so much. There's a question. Hello, um, I have a question um, about the su uh, sustainable. Uh, yes, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Remember, for sustainable, I, we, we, we want a lot of visitors in our website, so for I sustainable. Got it here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to visit. Actually, for the rest of the. Um, <laughs> first of all, I would like to congratulate you. I think your work is. Thank amazing. you. Um, I think that your work is deeply rooted in the connected learning theory. Um, the three principles are it must be interest driven, mm -hmm. second, uh, it's collaborative, and third, um, it's rooted in academic goals. I, I can see perfectly the first and the second one, but uh, I'm, I'm curious to know how do you articulate it uh, in terms of curricular curricular goals. Of course they are learning because they are doing it, but in, in practice, are the teachers in your school uh, giving time and aligning the activities towards Ooh. the project? First Ooh, question. <laughs> that's a tricky question. Um, you have more? It's just that one. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, the mechanics. Well, for, for, How are you articulating I, Actually, I'm really lucky to be in a school, I was explaining before to a couple of colleagues, uh, my school use, um, 
instead of teaching one hour periods, we teach uh, 50 to uh, 55 uh, periods and we make or we win these five minutes every single day and at the end of the week we have like six periods that we can do whatever we want. So in, during these six periods we have a lot of different projects and that was a great opportunity because I have my own space, my 25 students involved in the project and I have every single week two hours to do everything. That was one part. That's in this project. I've been doing other projects in other schools and you also uh, find this problem because when you need to talk to other people and other colleagues actually and tell them, okay, I'm gonna use your hour because I need to do this experiment or I need to do this questionnaire. Sometimes you need to convince that there is behind something. Um, I think you are learning no matter what. And this is really important. If you think that right now, 2016, uh, everything is all about content, we are not talking about education. I'm talking about something else. So, because I understand, that's what I, my, my, my feeling, eh? uh, uh, education is more than content, and this kind of project brings another value. It can be a European value, it can be working in a collaborative way, uh, working, being, uh, acting different way, and etc. So I understand this kind of project like this. So for me, every single hour that I use myself and my student in the project, they're learning, somehow they're learning something. And it's good, I mean, it's, and that's why we are here. If you not, I will push play with my classes, and that's it, and I will sit. So what's the reason of teaching if it's just communication content? No, that's not enough. It's That's content what, in practice. Uh, well, uh, yeah, of course, and then, and, and, and I can see, I mean, in every single class, I see an activity that even the geography uh, um, uh, professor can use just to talk about the four countries that we are involved, or the chemical um, uh, professor or as a teacher can use this experiment as a, when they talk about water or atoms. Uh, the, st the mathematical uh, professor can use uh, to analyze the statistics. Come on, you have the resources, you have the people, and now you have the data, so just put together, and then at the end you have uh, some content from the project as excuse to do some learning. So, so there's yeah, it, it was it's difficult, eh? it was hard. difficult, but it was written that way. So, and actually we got a lot of points on, on when we justify how we're gonna manage to implement the project. So we talk about this, we talk about how difficult it was to create a schedule um, to put together the project. But we decide the four, the four, uh, con the four schools uh, to integrate all different subjects somehow in the project. And actually, right now it's working. Uh, sure, that it, uh, then the next panel is all about Erasmus Plus. Probably you can ask other colleagues about the, if they have problems or not. But in my case, I was really lucky. Or maybe really convincing to other <laughs> colleagues. Maybe it was that, I don't know. Thank but you. thank you for the question. Well, it's, it's time to finish, uh, and I, th I think it was the right way to end the session mm -hmm. of Panel 4. Thank you very much to you all, Thank you. and congratulations. <laughs>